Back in 1997, NASA sent a probe to Mars. That particular mission was the first of its kind on the Red Planet. The Pathfinder mission encased in a protected airbag unfolded, and what rolled out was the most wonderful thing I have ever seen. An unmanned ground vehicle. A Mars rover named Sojourner. It brought back memories of witnessing Star Destroyers deploying the Imperial Probe droids to different planets as a scout. Thus, I decided to build my own scout. Unfortunately, I don't have the billion dollar funding of NASA, but that doesn't stop me from building my own. NASA may have their funding, but I have my dream. Okay, for this project, I am using this drill motors. I have a few of them lying around for a very long time. And I'm using this mower wheel. Since they have different hole sizes, I use a steel spacer and I drilled holes on all of them and made sure they're all aligned. And then use a screw to hold them together. I 3D printed this motor bracket and placed four inserts. I then mount the motor with screws. I also soldered the motor wires. I decided to use PVC as a frame as it is cheap and readily available. PVC cement is used to join them together. I also use an epoxy for the 3D printed parts. The wheel assemblies are then mounted on the frame with screws. I ran out of colored wires, the reason I only use green wires, but as long as you mark the positive from negative, it should be fine. Unlike the track robot I previously built that utilizes skid steering, this uses the separate thrust and steering method, just like a car. As the fall season is fast approaching and the weather starts to get cold, I utilize my heat box to expedite epoxy curing. I then put together the steering assembly, together with the servo mount. A straight PVC tubing joins both thrust and steering assembly. 
Also added are the mounts for the electronic housing. I also noticed the frame is too rigid and decided to make it twist to conform to any uneven terrain. Thus I decided to cut the main tube. I don't have a bearing but substituted this broken gimbal motor instead. I then glued the assembly and then later on let it dry. I then proceeded with the steering assembly. For a steering rod, I used a rigid metal rod and an assembly with screws to lock on it. The beetle will act as a lever for the servo arm later on. I added an extension on the servo arm as it was too short. After aligning everything, I made markings as a guide as I will be disassembling them for gluing. Now as it has cured, it is time to replace the main tube. I just hope this works. For the housing, I choose to use wood just like my quadcopter build as it is cheaper and faster than 3D printing. I've been asked why I just don't 3D print everything. Well, 3D printing is printing it layer by layer and just consumes so much time when you can just cut an existing part to your requirement. 3D printing is just an aspect of a build and not an overall solution. I believe no one should confine themselves to one approach but open to other solutions as well. I then left it overnight to cure. I used an extra carbon fiber housing I previously built for my batteries. 
which will be seated underneath. I installed individual motor driver for each motor. I used an RC receiver and plugged in the steering servo on channel 1. Both motors will be receiving PWM signal from channel 3, so I use a splitter cable. I made a bigger housing as I will be integrating Pixel controller and Raspberry Pi for my future experiments. Now it's just a test if this robotic platform works. to tidy up the cable. I also added an antenna housing for my telemetry radio that I'll be using in the future. I also noticed that my scout looked more of a farm tractor than the Mars rover. I made sure to tighten everything and mount the cover. And now for the field test. The wheel assembly mount broke off early on. This is expected as 3D printed parts are meant for prototyping and not for actual field use. I have to bring it back to the lab for replacement. But this time I added in a chamfer to the mount for extra support. Then proceeded back to the field. Let this be a lesson to aspiring engineers out there. Stop over analyzing and start doing. Learn what works and what doesn't in the real world. The more failure, the better. The more you learn. Yes, the design is not perfect. I even tried it several times. The wheels just don't have the spikes for traction. A room for improvement. I also tried it on hard surface with no issue. And even tried it on rocky terrain. I hope you find anything useful in my video and check my other videos as well. Thank you guys for watching.